Morning guys, welcome to round 12 edition of Footy Rants. Um, before I get started, uh, I just want to apologise if I sound terrible for some reason I've woken up <laughs> with some sort of hay fever or something. So um, yeah, please bear with me. I will still try and bring as much energy as I normally do. Uh, wanted to, just because it's a short round this week, obviously leading into State of Origin, I wanted to talk a little bit of State of Origin. So I hope that if you're listening to this, you, you well and truly are aware of both squads. Um, they've been out for almost a week now. So, But I'll, for those who haven't, I'll just quickly run through them again. Um, for New South Wales, uh, we've got James Tedesco, Blake Ferguson, Josh Dugan, Jared Hayne, Brett Morris, James Maloney, Mitchell Pearce, Aaron Woods, Nathan Peets, Andrew Fafita, Josh Jackson, Boyd Cordner, and Tyson Brazil. Boyd Cordner is the captain of the side and becomes the 19th captain of New South Wales. The interchange bench is David Klemmer, Wade Graham, Jake Travojevic, and Jack Bird. 18th man, Matt Moylan, and other squad members include Jordan McLean and Jack DeBellin. For the Queensland side, we've got Darius Boyd, Corey Oates, Will Chambers, Justin O'Neill, Dane Gagai, Anthony Milford, Cooper Cronk, Dylan Napa, Cameron Smith, captain as usual, Nate Miles, Josh Papali, Matt Gillett, Josh Maguire. Interchange, Michael Morgan, Sam Thiday, Aiden Guerra, and Jacob Lilliman. 18th man, Jonathan Thurston, who we now know has been ruled out officially of that game, uh, which means that Anthony Milford becomes a certain starter. Uh, well, at least he's going to get a debut. Whether whether he does start um, is something that, that I'll look to question later. Uh, yeah, so obviously there's a there's a few omissions that people weren't too happy about. If you're, if you're a Queenslander, you're obviously shaking your head as to why Billy Slater isn't in there. So I just wanted to have a look at a few uh, few stats of, of some certain players and, and run through a few things here. So uh, on the left here, we've got Corey Oates and Darius Boyd who are in the squad and Valentine Holmes and Billy Slater who are left out of the squad. Um, so we've got Corey Oates who we know, all know can find the line, um, but you probably expect, so he's got a total of five tries this year. Uh, Darius Boyd with two, Valentine Holmes with two, and Billy Slater with three. So you sort of expect uh, the fullbacks to have a bit of a lesser role now because they're a bit more ball playing, uh, and Corey Oates is a genuine finisher. Uh, you know, you can see Billy Slater's holding his own with line breaks with with six, which is the equal lead with Corey Oates. Uh, try assists, again, he's got three more try assists than Darius Boyd in, in uh, a lead of eight to five. And I just want to sort of touch on a stat here. So one that doesn't play in, in Billy Slater's favour is missed tackles. So you've got 23 missed tackles. Not a good stat. You don't, you don't want your fullback missing that many tackles. But when you look at why a fullback has to make tackles, this is, this is something that I want to counter this argument with. So, so I've read on um, some other rugby league media pages that this is one of the reasons why Billy Slater was was left out of the side. They feel that that was um, an indication that his shoulder wasn't 100%. So missed tackles here, 23. If we go back up here to total tackles, you've got 84 tackles for Darius Boyd. So over 30 tackles more than his nearest rival in Billy Slater on 53. Now if we jump ahead, whoop, wrong one. And we go to missed tackles for these halves. Bingo. Here's your man. Anthony Milford, 39. That's the reason why Darius Boyd's making that many tackles. So if you want to talk about you know, who is and isn't doing their job properly, this is a kid that everyone's spruiking up in Anthony Milford, but he's almost like he's made nine more missed tackles than than the next in line. Daily Cherry Evans, who isn't in the side, has made less than half. So I don't want to harp on too much about the halves just yet. I want to stay on topic, but that's just something, a little correlation that I wanted to make for you guys. Um, the fact that, that Darius Boyd has to make those tackles. Yes, it's good that, that he's um, hasn't missed, missed many. He's only missed eight out of uh, 80 odd, so 10%. Um, Otherwise, here, if, we, if we're looking at some, some other stats, keeping in mind that Billy Slade has played the least amount of game time out of all of these contenders, um, but he's, he's come up with 
um, 16 offloads, which is uh, nine more than is nearest in Valentine Homes, who's also out of the site. So, um, I mean, you wouldn't be picking Valentine Homes for that offload because he'd be a winger if he was getting picked in the, the uh, Queensland site. So th this is basically the argument that I'm making that um, meters run, you know, he's, he's a, um, a leader from the back Valentine Homes, so he, he would do the same there. Um, at the same job that, that a Corey Oates would do out the back for you. Um, Valentine's Homes actually reminds me a lot of Carmichael Hunt when he started uh, getting real aggressive with, with his uh, fullback returns. Um, more so once he got that taste of playing lock in State of Origin, um, Carmichael Hunt. So, yeah, they, they got a starting to get a similar physique too. You know, Valentine Holmes is really starting to fill out as he's starting to get a little bit older now. Um, and we see here the, the tackle breaks. It, it's pretty much even across the park. You know, you've uh, Corey Oates is the lowest in, in 31, and then it scales up. Darius Boyd, 36. Holmes, 38. And, and Billy Slater with 40. So if I'm sitting there thinking that and someone that I've left out of this graph um, is Justin O'Neill. And, you know, th this is coming from a Cowboys supporter. I don't think Justin O'Neill should be there. Uh, I, would, I would much rather, like... I don't care. Like, if you want to be this arguer for Darius Boyd should be the fullback, it's been two years, um, blah, blah, blah. If, like, the two-year thing is, like, the the basis of your argument, the biggest core thing that you can bring, sweet. So just two years out of the game, but the stats that Billy Slater's brought in his first, you know, 10 weeks that he's been back, is he not better suited to fit in a team than a Justin O'Neill? Like, is Dane Gagai not playing better centre football than Justin O'Neill, like I would, I would happily move Gago into the centres, kick O'Neill out, and put and put Slater on the wing just so he's in my team. Like if, if that's if that's the argument you make, but um, you know I, I can see the argument now to not um, leave Darius Boyd on the wing. You know one of the, one of the things I used to like to bring up. You know he's the most prolific um, try scorer, try scoring winger in in Queensland history. But he was on the back of, of Thurston and Inglis, who are no no longer in, in that starting side um, this year. Uh, hopefully, we will see JT back um, by game two. But who knows? You know, it's it's obviously starting to to get milked on more and more and more. This injury of Thurston's, uh, the fact that he was named in the squad for the Cowboys last week, and there's you know now he's been ruled out of Origin, which is still not until Wednesday. Um, you know, perhaps they were just sort of fibbing all along uh, when they named him in that squad. Uh, moving forward into some of the the front row stakes for the Queensland side. Uh, so again, on the left here, we've got the who I think will probably come up to be the starting front rowers if if Nate Miles uh, isn't fit. Uh, I haven't heard too much more on on how his knee is, to be perfectly honest. Um, but we, yeah, here we've got so Jacob Lilliman and Dylan Napa in the side, and then uh, I just want to make some comparisons with with Jared Wallace and Corbin Sims. Um, so keep it in mind that the two selected here in, in Lilliman and Napa play uh, moderate minutes, so pretty sort of similar game styles as as far as their um, minutes involved are concerned. Uh, whereas the opposing guys here, Jared Wallace, you know, he you can get some some decent minutes out of him. Um, and Corbin Sims, you, you're going to sort of let him off like a frog in a sock. Um, yeah, so a, a similar work rate to, to Dylan Harper, as we've seen the minutes down further down. Uh, Corbin Sims is having a great year for the Broncos, uh, and that's evident in uh, leading the charge with the, the try scored. He scored four tries, and the other boys are, are still on the nudie. Um, four, four line breaks, Jared Wallace just with the one. The, the two that are selected haven't made a line break, haven't scored a try. Um, Again, Corbin Sims with a try assist. No one else has had a try assist. Um, if we pull it here with the minutes played, so um, you can you can make a a cool little comparison um, across the the work rate of of Napa and Sims here because they've, they've only two minutes difference as far as minutes played. So Sims has out tackled him. Uh, Narps has outrun him, but Sims is clearly. Um, killed him for, for that offload. Um, Sims with 16 offloads in comparison to to Napa's three. So if you're having a look at offloads there, five total for, for your potential starting Queensland front row versus 20. Um, and that's just to have them in your team. Uh, yeah, and that's sort of what I was saying there with the, the minutes played. You know Wallace can get some minutes in for you, whereas 
these guys aren't you know playing as as long and again these two blokes in in Wallace and Sims lead the charge for for tackle breaks with uh, 29 between them versus 15 and they also have missed more tackles than these guys so you know there's some pretty glaring stats to say you know how, how does Lilliman get get picked I can see why Narp has been picked um you know, he's, he's got to be that intimidator. The fact that he got to have a crack at Clemmer last week already and, and got over the over the top of um, the Bulldogs with that 24-18 win, uh, that, that'll that fill him with a little bit of confidence. And I think more than anything, he's just going to be excited. The fact that it, he probably would have played last year if it wasn't for the fact of the behaviour issues that, that saw him get uh, get banned for, from Origin footy due to the tough standards that they were holding there. Um yeah, so you, I think you can make some some cases as to why these boys um, should have been picked in the team at least somewhere. Um, and if if Nate Miles does get ruled out, and obviously now um, JT's out, uh, there, there's even an opportunity for both of them to come in and, and at least one of them be 18th man there. So it will be interesting to see uh, where Kevy Walters puts his choices moving forward. Yeah, so having a look now at this little. Uh, Halves stat. Uh, so originally, when I was looking at all these, I uh, didn't know that Thurston was out, uh, and, and sort of what I wanted to have a look at was perhaps where um, Walter's thinking was as far as styles of play. Um, as as we scroll down, you'll start to see that that Milford and Morgan have a, have achieved uh, a lot of similar. They're a lot more similar as far as the stats read, but I think the way that they go and achieve them um, are slightly different. Whereas you can see that Cherry Evans and, and Cooper Cronk are a bit more uh, traditional as far as halfbacks go. So Cooper Cronk having a great season uh, already with the tries. Um, most of the, well, all the guys that have been selected um, have found their way over the strike, which which shows me that they're pushing up on the footy really well. So Milford with four, Cherry Evans only with one, Morgan with four, and Cooper Cronk with five. Uh, line breaks, again here, so your, your two leaders uh, are Milford and Morgan with four and five respectively. But, you know, we all know that Milford's that, that smaller smaller guy. He's got the footwork, you know, the dummy, and, and away he goes, whereas Morgan sort of uses his size a little bit and, um, and his ball playing options now that he has been the dominant half of the Cowboys for the last four or five weeks. Um, you know, the, the fact that that kicking game's gotten better uh, post that Australian camp, um, you know, he'll, he'll either play short, play out the back with the options that he's got with Coot back now. And, and once he gets that, that going, so short, out the back, kick, and then all of a sudden he brings that running game in, um, it, it really opens up those options for the Cowboys. And we've seen it. He's crossed the stripe a couple of times and played out the back, and we've sco scored a couple of uh, tries off kicks. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, try assists, a big, a big plus um, you know, for Cherry Evans there to, to push his case. He's, he's creating opportunities, whereas Billy Slater has actually ha got more try assists than, than Cooper Cron um, in eight versus five. Um, and again, this sort of just elaborates the, the all running meter stat for, for Milford. He's run for almost 1100 meters. So he likes to get his hands on the footy and move. Um, again, probably to a certain degree, um, a little bit of a false stat because we know now that, you know, Ben Hunt's been out for the last, um, five, six weeks, whatever it's been now. Um, so he's been the dominant half and same with Morgan, you know, with, with no JT there, he's just simply had to have his, his hands on the footy more and I think why uh, Cooper Cronks is probably uh, a little bit lower is just because you've got so many ball players um, at, at the Storm you know you, you've obviously got Smith who controls that ruck but then you've got Munster and Slater that are playing edge to edge um, yeah and we don't I mean minutes played is pretty well null and void they're all playing full games and, and Milf gets those offloads so you know the running meters and the, uh, and the offloads are a big plus for Milford. Um, but I guess why they, uh, if, you, if you have a look across them, you know, Cherry Evans is a lot closer to, to a Cooper Cronk as far as the stats sort of play out. So they probably want something a little bit different just because, you know, when you normally have, have a JT there, um, they're quite a contrast in, in energy types, you know, JT and Cooper Cronk. 
JT is very, you know, highly strung, very emotive, plays with his heart on his sleeve. Um, really obvious when he goes for and it makes those extra effort plays, you know, those a lot of those defensive plays when you see him coming across the field, they're things that you take notice of. Whereas Cooper Cronk is, you know, very much, let's set a voice, let's stick to the structure, just know your job, um, listen to me, have faith in me, um, and, and, and I'll get the job done for you. Um, so I think that energy type is, is really, really interesting. So having someone like a Milford out there will probably, again, that's probably closer to a JT energy type as far as like the, the flair and, um, you know, the, the, the sort of bravado, the way he loves to play, you know, everything's like, let's, let's get it. Whereas Morgan, we know he's, he's very... I don't even know how you would describe Michael Morgan's um, on-field demeanor. He's he doesn't look like much of a talker. Um, you know, he, he sort of just gets gets about his job and, and just tries to to lead by action. I guess um, you know the fact that he does get get stuck in. Um, if we have a look down here um, with the tackles, we know, and that actually surprises me that he's he's made um, so few tackles. Um, outside of, of Cherry Evans and, and Cooper Cronk. Um, but yeah, just to sort of to touch back, like he's on to, to go off topic off Morgan and back onto Milford again. Um, Milford's had to make the, the fewest tackles there and only 121. And he's missed 39. You know, that's that's an important stat. Like if you want to go tossing up that Billy Slater hasn't been, hasn't been picked because... He's missed um, 20 odd tackles. The fact that the bloke that's going to be starting on debut has no experience at State of Origin, has missed double the amount, and he's had to make what's the closest? He's 40 or 30 less tackles than, than the next half. That concerns me a little bit. If, if I'm Laurie Daly and I see that stat, I'm like, all right, well, well, we don't even have to look at that stat. If I'm Laurie Daly anyway, I know I'm fucking running everything at Milford. I'm going to do everything I can. Um, to, to get over the top of him. So, yeah, look, it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, for, for me, just because Morgan and Cronk have played rep footy together, especially at the Australian level, I'd be super, super tempted, um, especially early on, if, if Milford tosses up any of those poor defensive efforts early on in the game, you know, you need to start games well in state of origin. You need to get into that arm wrestle um, and, you know, sort of sniff each other out the first 20, even 30 minutes before before any sort of real action can really start to open up. Um, I'd be very tempted to, to start Michael Morgan at six. Um, again, I don't think he will, simply because I think Kevin Walters loves Anthony Milford. Um, and I'm not sure what Daily Cherry Evans has done to the powers that be, but... Unfortunately, I don't think we'll ever see uh, Cherry Evans in a rep jersey again if we're starting to see debutants and stuff like that. Um, you know, Sadie's crack did his job, and you know, then Michael Morgan took his substitute role, and you know, I think this is Morgan's third year now. So, yeah, unfortunately for Cherry Evans, I think that the ship may have sailed on his rep career, which is really unfortunate. He was such a talented kid, um, especially when he burst on the scene for Manly in, in, I believe, 2013 was his first year when they went straight to the grand final. But yeah. Um, moving forward, we wanted to have a bit of a poke around in this New South Wales team. I know New South Welshmen love Queenslanders talking about their team, so here we go. This was something that I thought was really, really interesting, seeing Jack Bird on there. Yes, he's played this role before, but when you've got a bloke with the ability, off-the-cuff ability that Tyrone Peachy has, um, and, that, and that's the role that he's been playing for his club, is that interchange role, just have a look at some of the stats that he's tossed up here. So, already scored four tries whilst playing off the bench. Six, two line breaks in favour of Peachy. Um, same amount of tackles whilst playing uh, 200 less minutes. Um, he's only he's run for only 100 metres less than Jack Bird. Uh, four less offloads than Jack Bird, though. Um Missed tackles, Jack Bird 38, Peachy only 22, and tackle bus, they're, they're pretty well on par, so they're both dangerous there. So I think what, what plays in, in Bird's favour there is these stats here. So matches the, the tackle breaks, he's, he's breaking the line a lot, he's got the offload in him, and um, 
and he's got that try assist. Uh, we've seen the combination that he had there with um, Wade Gray in the game against the Dragons. There was those two occasions there where Graham was able to um, to benefit off a, off a Jack Bird offload. Um, I don't even think that um, Graham scored off those efforts, but it was just the pressure that was built off the back of those. I know definitely one, um, it led. It was off that, that play of the ball where they actually thought uh, Wade Graham dropped it and Sasai Feki scored the eventual match winner. So, yeah. But for me, the, the, the reason why I like Peachy, yeah, he's just that, that unpredictable sort of player like and I'm not saying like leave Jack Bird out of the team I would I would have picked I would have picked him over Jared Hayne to be honest um, you know the fact that he plays with that that confidence now Jack Bird and, and that he's had the taste of origin um, yeah I would not be scared to pick a, a little bulldog like Tyron Peachy I'd love to see him out there I love watching him play week in week out and you know if you're asking me who their utility player is off the bench I'm a lot more comfortable as a Queensland supporter with Jack Bird coming off the bench, playing a relatively, you know, sort of unfamiliar role, sniffing around the middle, than, than a Peachy who'll do whatever the fuck it takes to get involved in the game. Um, so yeah, I thought that was a bit of an interesting um, player selection. But it gets even more interesting, and I don't think I'll have many arguments from, from too many New South Wales supporters here um, in the fact that... Uh, Paul Vaughan was was omitted from this New South Wales team, so you know, not not that I uh, have anything against Jake Trevojevic. Obviously, he's got some some rep on his under his belt now, which which Paul Vaughan still lacks um, in in his career. Um, you can see all the all the boys have have found their way over the trial line this year. Uh, Trevojevic with four, Vaughan with three, Debellin with two. Um, we see Paul Vaughan with the solo try assist. That was to, to Russell Packer in that, that Sharks game. Uh, tackle bus even, four reach for, for Vaughan and Trevojevic, only one for DeBellin. Uh, the work rate is good, but again, if we compare it against minutes, so Trevojevic as, as captain of Manly, he's a, just about an 80-minute player. Um, there's not too many games where he'll come off, but it's markedly less for, uh, for Paul Vaughan. You know, he's only accrued, he's accrued 300 less minutes but then when you look, at, he leads the way for all run meters. So we know he's effective with his carries. Again, 300 less minutes, you would probably expect half the offloads. But in saying that, 100 less minutes for DeBellin than, than Trevojevic, and he's got nine more offloads. 24 offloads. 24 offloads for Jack DeBellin. You know, that that's I'm not sure who the leader of offloads um, is in the game, but he, he'd, be, he'd be easily top 10. And when you think about guys who do have offloads, so we, we already look at a bike that we just spoke about only a few minutes ago, Jack Bird off the bench, Wade Graham off the bench. Um, I would be so tempted to, to go the other way with energy types, with with Fafita and Clemmer. I would, I would probably start Clemmer and, and bring that psychopath Fafita on. Um, again, as a Queensland supporter, that would scare me more. Um, and if I'm trying to put my myself in the, the head of a Queensland player, I'm like, well... Yeah, Fafita's going to go off like a frog in a sock, but I'd rather him come at me like that when I've got all my energy at the start too and I'm ready to go. Um, but in saying that, if, if Napa's starting as well, I probably want to see Napa and Fafita go at it to start with. I think that'll be awesome. Um, and just a, a few more stats here, just that the tackle breaks. So those boys have absolutely smashed Trevojevic. You know, you, you just sort of look at their stature. They're just, you know, tall. Uh, Paul Vaughan's a, a fucking giant. So, um, you know, physically, for me, I think he just brings something that's a little bit different. Um, yeah, I, I, I really feel for the bloke. You know, sometimes you, you sort of sit back and wonder, is like, is, is he just not getting picked because he, he doesn't have the experience, you know what I mean, as far as representative level goes? But if you give a bloke like Paul Vaughan, who's been around forever and a day, a rep jersey, he is not going to let you down. You know, there is nothing in my mind that would indicate to me that he would let Laurie Daly down. Um, yeah, it was a real bizarre one, especially because Jack DeBellin's, you know, like in the squad as like a development player or whatever they're, they're going on about. Um yeah, like if we if we go back, like let's just have a look at the lineups of what you've got there. I mean, I know it's a quality team. It's if if anything, 
um, that, that New South Wales does have going for him. It's, it's that edge middle back row. Um, you know, have, have a look at that. You know, Josh, Josh Jackson, Boyd Corner, Tyson Brazil. I would have Wade Graham in my starting side um, just because Josh Jackson, yes, he's a, he's a tackling machine. Um, and this is a conversation that I was having on Facebook with, with my good mate Taylor Brown from the Redcliffe Dolphins. So sh- shout out to Breezy. Um, this, is, this is credit to you, brother. That's something that you brought up. Um, was it, yeah, Josh Jackson, you know, is, is a tackling machine. He, Breezy was right. And I think that what, what Graham can bring is just that option to relieve that kicking pressure, especially because he already has that combination with the James Maloney. Uh, yeah, so for me, that that's something that that I would be trying to to adjust in my team um, initially. I don't I don't want to bring and unless Laurie Daly's thinking is you know I've got Fafita starting. He's going to be a psycho. I need some stability there. Um, Clem is going to come in. Not not the most stable bloke either. Like he, he's going to go he's going to go crazy. We've seen what he did in that series when they they finally broke the, the eight year drought. He sort of bullied the the Queensland forwards a little bit, but hasn't had much success since. Um, and then Wade Graham has that sort of X factor again, bit of a bit of a stand, stock standard player, Jason Vujovic. You know, it's just for me, like there's a difference between you know effectiveness, work rate, and then like out and out origin energy. And if I'm sitting there as any of these um, Queensland forwards, and I see Drake, Jake Travojevic coming off the bench, and then you notice that he's on the field, I'm like, so what? Like I, he's he's not intimidating. Like he's a big. He's a baby face, you know. He just he just doesn't. Yeah, there, there's no origin death factor there for me. Um, I just think he's someone that'll sort of just go about his work, and then you'll you'll look at the end of the game, and you're like, oh fuck, he made fucking he made forty tackles off the bench, like, yeah, fucking good effort, mate. You know what I mean? But you won't even know. Uh, yeah, so there are a few of just my little origin points. We could have gone on even more. We could have gone into the Hain factor. We could have gone into. Um, Farah being left out. Uh, what, what other stuff? We could have gone into the Sam Thiday selection. Um, probably picked on experience, but I mean, Aiden Guerra should count himself very lucky, um, especially with the, the form of some of the back rowers in the game for Queensland. You know, you've got Cohen Hess nipping at his heels. You ask me, he's played better footy. I think even Ethan Lowe's played better footy than Aiden Guerra this year. Um, yeah, so there's a few blokes that are, that are lucky and the fact that we're living in a decade of dominance for Queensland uh, plays into the hands of, of a few of these players, and you know, for whatever reason, now we're, we're built on being loyal and you know, blah 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 blah. But I think there's a difference between not a difference, but a balance between loyalty, experience, and current form. There's 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 a difference in the argument of. Guerra, you know, he's been around for what, mate, three series now, I would say, two or three. So you, you would consider him experienced, you know, he's he's experienced success at an origin level. But is he in form? Like, why do we need to be loyal to someone who's, you know, been around for a few? You know, he's not a massive name in the game. Um, yeah, it, it's beyond me. You know, there, there'd be much more of a case for someone like Sam Thayde, who's been around for over a decade, versus Aguero. So yeah, that, they're my little thoughts on Origin. Um, and now we'll uh, we'll jump straight into Clubland. So our first game is the Rabbitohs versus Parramatta. Now the Bunnies have won nine of their last. 11 games against Parramatta. So that's obviously a, a big plus for them. We can see at the top here, uh, the only real omission is Bryson Goodwin for the, the Rabbitohs side. Um, and, and for me, um, what I like most uh, about this team that, that I think will be the difference, um, I'm going to tip the, the Rabbitohs. I think they'll bounce back. Um, yes, they lost to the Storm in what, what we described as a bit of a a punishing uh, viewing experience in, in those trying conditions in Perth. But yeah, what I like for, for the Rabbitohs is here. So you've got Cody Walker, John Sutton, Reynolds, and Farah. And I think the fact that Farah, we, we've seen in the past when, when Farah has, something hasn't gone his way, he's pretty good at responding with a great performance um, immediately. And I think that that's what will happen 
um, with a bit of a lackluster performance um, with with his kicking game, Reynolds last week, um, and then eventually having to go off the field with that HIA, I think he'll be ready to bounce back. Um, if Johnny Sutton continues the running game that he started the game with against Melbourne last week, he's going to be a lot more effective against a, a team like um, Parramatta, especially with the defensive efforts of a halfback like uh, Mitchell Moses. Um, yeah, so so not not too much has changed. Uh, Alex Johnson will, will stay on the wing after the the move. It's Cody Walker to fullback, which I'm sure he's probably a, a little bit disappointed about. Uh, we see George Burr just come back into the fray, so he'll come off the bench. So that's a, a big plus. I'll be pretty surprised if if Braden Burns stays on the bench. It would be interesting to see how they would choose to use him when they've got someone like a Zane Musgrove. I really like the energy that Zane brings. Um, so yeah, if I, if I'm the coach, I'd probably say that that Musgrove will get the nod and and um, Braden Burns will will maintain his 18th man status. Um, yeah, moving into the the Parramatta lineup. Um, so. Some, some solid ins, uh, Brad Takarangi Rangi and, and David Gower. So you got the flair of Takarangi and, and the experience of, of Gower, but unfortunately, big losses too in, in Michael Jennings and, and Nathan Brown, who's been playing some really good footy, probably the best of his career. You know, he's been a bit of a journeyman, been at a few clubs now, but, uh, you know, worked his way into a into a starting position, keeping someone like a Bo Scott on the bench. Um so we see, we see from the start, you know, that in the outside backs, there's still a little bit of danger there. Bevan French is going to make you pay when, whenever opportunities are given. Same with Semi Radradra. Uh, Brad Takarangi will be so, so keen to get back in um, to the fray of things. And we know how dangerous he can be. You know, he's played six. Um, he can play in the edge back row. He's side, so diverse just because of his body type. He's that big, tall, rangy fella with that offload. He's got a little bit of a kicking game. Um, yeah, a really, really multi a genuine multitasker of the game. Um, we've seen Avar and Hoffman, they're starting to develop their combination uh, quite well on that right edge now. Um, and, you know, you're going to see Mitchell Moses continue to, to improve as he um, spends more and more time training with with all of these blokes. But, um, you know, I think I think Bo Scott will really try and uh, roll his sleeves up and, and get through a, a heap of work in the absence of Nathan Brown. He, he won't, won't want to let Coach Brad Arthur down. Um, so, you know, there, there's still definitely strike weapons on this field um, for, for Parramatta. I don't think it's going to be by any means um, a, a blowout score. Um, but I think if they can isolate that edge um, with, just scrolling back up, with um, the half in Johnny Sutton and, um, and Cole Turner in the back row, um, to be honest, I would even look to try and get Burgess out on that that edge. You know, he scored on the that left side of the ruck against the Tigers um, a few weeks ago when they won 28-8. So obviously that, that was um, Moses' last game there. So if they can get him interested, and again, um, in that same game, Cody Walker absolutely blitzed uh, Mitchell Moses up. So because that's so recent, I think they'll take a lot of... Uh, a lot of confidence in, in going back to a lot of the game plan structures around what they brought to the Tigers game. Um, so for me, they're, they're the big differences. Um, uh, and now that you're, you're missing the the attacking strike weapon in Michael Jennings, the, the work rate of a, of a Nathan Brown, um, I don't think they're going to quite be able to bring enough to the table. And, and that's why I'm going to lean towards uh, the Rabbitohs. Uh, probably still only in a, in a 1 to 12. Um, they, they do have the ability that there's definitely the names on on the sheets of paper um, for for the Rabbitohs to, to put a score on them. But um, I think that, that Parramatta will be able to do, do enough to, to keep them at bay as far as anything. You know, if it is 13 plus, it'll be very marginal. All right, moving into the second game. Warriors versus the Broncos over the ditch. Um, it's it's not hard to to see that the Broncos are going to be very 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 depleted. But to to start on with the the New Zealand Warriors team, um, we see the return of Captain Simon Mannering um, and Albert Vette will come onto the bench as well, uh, with Jacob Lilliman um, being called into the Origin squad. Again, you look you look at this team on paper and it's. It's the, the New Zealand spine, RTS, Four and Johnson, Luke. You've got rep players in. 
um, Mussolino, uh, Hoffman, Mannering, you know, they've all been there and played at such a, a great level. Why isn't this team getting results? Why are they continuing again and again and again to fall short? Um, it's so frustrating to watch. Um, I can't imagine what it's like if there's any New Zealand Warriors fans listening to this, what it's like following that team. Um, it must be so painstaking to, to see the potential. You must hate hearing that word every week, every year, you know, for, for the last 20 odd years. But um, it's, it's true. You guys have the talent. Um, you've, you've got the play. You've got the playlist there. And you really need to be capitalizing on everything, every game that you've got Kieran for and left. Um, and to, to be building that momentum so whoever steps up into that sixth role for next year can just try and make that as seamless as possible. But it, it seems really hard now with the fact that, you know, that Ben Madalino is moving on. Um, yeah, there's, there's got to be some uh, some interesting times ahead for the Warriors. And I'm not, I'm not sure if they're going to get any better, unfortunately. But, hey, I think that there is room for, for plenty of joy and that they should really execute um, on a solid game plan here. You see how much change there is in this this Brisbane side. Uh, interesting choice. Whether it happens, we can see down here that um, Cody Nikarima has actually been named 18th man. So after all his good performances, he's, he's crossed the stripe for a few tries in the last few weeks. He's been omitted from this team for Benji Marshall and Ben Hunt. So Benji Marshall will, will start uh, for the first time in a long time. You know, he's only he's got one cap for the Broncos. Um, and that was off the bench. Um, but yeah, a big, 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 big shuffle around for the Broncos. So a completely new spine to what we saw last week. So no Darius Boyd, obviously. So Kahu moves to, to um, fullback. Um, no no Milford because of origin. Um, no Nick Arima because Hunt's back. And no Andrew McCulloch because of that head knock. So Travis Waddell gets his first game uh, for the year for the Donkeys. Um, yeah, and we've got a couple of other um, supposed debuts. I mean, George Fye, he was on the bench the other week but didn't get played. So technically, again, another chance at debut. Uh, Jai Arrow, we haven't seen much of in recent times, so we're pretty familiar with, with his presence off the bench, along with Jai Fungawi and, and Joey Boyce. Um, I had the pleasure of, of uh, coaching Joey's little brother, at the Storm last year. Um, so I know Boise will be pumped up to see his older brother finally get a crack at, at the top grade. So so Joey Boyce plays for the, the South Logan Magpies in the, the Queensland Cup. Um, he's uh, he's not the biggest bloke you'll ever see playing in the middle, but his work rate is through the fucking roof. Um, and, and I hope he gets plenty of game time because I think he will uh, he'll go to town and, and really bring some energy, some much needed energy to, to potentially uh, get over the top of... Um, these New Zealand forwards. Um, I, I would like to see Nick Arima um, come off the bench, to be honest, or even start at nine, um, just to help Woodell with that that speed of play. I, I'd be very surprised if they left um, Woodell stranded out there to play 80 minutes at nine, um, especially because there's no Maguire there to, to sort of fill in if needed, as was the case last week with McCulloch getting injured. Uh, so... Yeah, some, some other players. We see Corbin Sims, he'll get his crack in the starting side. Jaden Sewers there. Um, yeah, Herman Assessi will get get another start in the front row, which he's done a couple of times. Now with the, the changes that they've been making, bringing Sims and uh, and um, Sam Thide off the bench. But otherwise, yeah, um, Jordan uh, Jonas Pearson and, and David Mead. To, to be honest, I probably would have gone with Tom Opacek over, over Jonas Pearson, um, having watched both of them play at Redcliffe last year. Um, I think Pearson and Mead are probably a lot more similar in their gameplay, whereas you know Oppie is a lot closer to to a uh, a Corey Oates. You know he he's doesn't have the height of Oates, but he's definitely a solid solid little bastard. Um, and and we've seen you know he's turned it on the uh, Auckland Nines at the start of last year and, and ended up getting a few caps during the season, as did Pearson. Um, so yeah, for that reason, I, I probably would have liked to see. Opacek get his get his chance uh, after rebounding from a double shoulder recon. Um, the poor bugger. Um, don't wish that upon anyone. I've, I've had one on uh, two on one shoulder, but to have uh, back to back on on both shoulders, that's uh, some effort to be back playing already as well. So, 
yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. You know, there's still some some experience in this uh, in this Brisbane outfit, obviously in six and seven, which is where you want it with with Marshall and Hunt. But this will be the first time that they've played in the halves together. Um, you know, Adam Blair, Alex Glenn. You know, even Corbett Sims has been around the block long enough now. Um, See, so, you know, I, I don't think, and simply because of the form that the Warriors are in, this hot and cold nature, it, yes, the opportunity is there for them to run up a score, but something tells me that they won't. Um, the Broncos have this innate ability of just hanging in, in games when they're uh, under fire um, during origin time, and, and I think the same will prevail um, simply with just the cool head of Benji Marshall. Um, ben Hunt, that'll fill him with confidence having someone of the experience of Marshall. Whether Marshall brings much to the table and, and turns on any sort of performance, you know, I don't think that should be an expectation of, of a Broncos fan. I think um, if he goes out there, provides the support and stability um, for, for Ben Hunt um, to, to try and steer these these forwards around, especially some of these inexperienced forwards around the pack, that's where most of the joy will come. Um, yeah, so for me... I think overall, um, if if for whatever reason Nick Arima is left out of the fray, I think that the the Warriors will, will get over the top, one to twelve. If Nick Arima does play, he could be a real big difference. He could be a real big difference, and I believe that that may may even get the Bronx home in an upset win. So don't get too disheartened, Bronx fans. I'm not a fan of your club as of North Queenslander. Um, I don't like the Broncos. But just don't write them off. They're a team you can never write off with that winning culture that they have instilled. Just, yeah, for whatever reason, whoever pulls on that Bronx jersey, it's like, oh, I know how to win now. Um, and you just keep doing it year after year, which shits me. <laughs> uh, moving into our next game, um, the Sharks and Bulldogs. Are the Sharkies a favourite for this game? Um, so, Doggies fans, I'd be um, I'd be opening up the wallet on on your team and, and having a good old look at this game. Um, you know, Valentine Holmes, uh, I think he'll be a, another person who, who will respond. Um, you know, after having an Australian jersey earlier in the year and then not making um, Queensland level, um, he'll, he'll be keen to, keen to, to, to turn on a big performance. We see um, Dra Bill. Uh, pushed into the centres with uh, Jack Bird and, and Edric Lee comes in for the his first game since um, round one or two. He only played the first couple of games for him before being dropped. Uh, for Manu Brown, uh, I'm to be perfectly honest, I'm I'm not super familiar with um, this this kid's background and and his experience in the halves. Whether that's I assume that's where he's been playing in uh, reserve grade. Uh, so yeah, I haven't done much research around him um, and. When Chad Townsend becomes a dominant half, it'll be interesting to see uh, what he comes up with, especially with those fifth tackle options. That's sort of where they've been struggling in that first half against the Cowboys last week. Uh, but once they sorted that out, but again, that was all sort of sparked off James Maloney last week. Um, and not having the flair of, of a Wade Graham there also hurts them. And, and the Fafido, and you know, it starts to, to tally up, which which really surprises me as to why... Um, as to why... Cronulla are the favourite um, team. I know they've got a, a lot of experience still. You know, Chad Townsend experience, Chris Hyington, Matt Pryor, Luke Lewis, Paul Gallen, um, and, and then even looking at this bench, Bakuya, Tagatisi, Lattimore, and Paula. You know, they've all played plenty of NRL. So I guess that, that stability of that bench, when I look at that bench, that says to me, okay, we're, we're going for experience here and we're going to try and just wear them out. We're, we're happy again to, to just get that, that two points. Um, so if we look down... At the uh, the Bulldogs lineup, so missing uh, Brett Morris, David Clemmer, and Josh Jackson to state of origin again. Um, Josh Jackson, a tackling machine for them. David Clemmer is their starting prop, and Brett Morris has been doing a, a, a great job um, for for Desi Hasler. Um, you know, playing a bit of uh, bit of a Mister Fix It role this year, which has been good. Um, Muha Bawadi, he, he'll continue on his way. Marcelo Montoya, he, he hasn't let anyone down when, when he's got his chances with, with Hopawadi being out injured earlier in the season. Um, Brinko Lee continues to, to have interesting battles, sort of hot and cold at times during the game, but um, when he's on, he's definitely on. I think the key here is the, the more games that, that Frawley and Embi play together is a good thing for the dogs. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens when Reynolds is fit to play again and, and what they decide to do with Frawley. 
Uh, I really hope he doesn't miss out. I hope he remains even if it is off that bench spot um, and then let him sort of roam and, and slot Moses into nine when you pull Leisha off. Um, yeah, look, there's still plenty of strike for, for the doggies here. This is what I like. And and I think where they are going to get some joy is is in that halves pairing. If Frawley can bring that kicking game, which has really opened up Moses and by his running game, um, he's finally taking that ball to the line, which is creating opportunities um, for, for his outside men in, in Branko Lee. Um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, we've got Greg Eastwood who will play on the opposite edge now. He normally sort of interchanges um, with Adam Elliott uh, and, and the ever-present James Graham will always be a threat. Um, and, and I guess it's just, you know, if Cassiano, is he going to show up this week? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not... Oh, Asapelli Fine, that's what I'm going to... I'm going to have a crack at that pronunciation. <laughs> Um, and, and Francis Tuolo, um and Craig Garvey. You know, if, if you look at that bench in comparison to um, the the Cronulla bench, again, Bakuya, Tagatisi, Lattimore, Paulo, that's I think that's probably where the favoritism comes um, for for the Sharkies. But I don't know. I don't know what it is. That sometimes when the chips are down for the dogs, they just find a way to win. And just out the back there, like Will Hopawati can win you a game. Josh Morris can win you a game. Branko Lee can lose you a game, but can also win you a game. <laughs> um, and Ken Kerrit Holland um, with his with his kicking game brings a bit. Um, his goal kicking brings some stability there too. Um, and without James Maloney, who is their their goal kicker. Um, that that could prove um, a difference for for the Sharkies as well. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go an upset. I'm going to go the doggies one to twelve. I think there's going to be some tight games this weekend. On to our last game before we uh, we wrap things up for for the preview for round twelve. Uh, we've got the Raiders versus the Roosters. Um, now the Roosters is a stat for you. The Roosters haven't won in Canberra since 2010. And now they have to try and do that without all of their origin stars. So, um, yeah, the the Raiders remain uh, pretty well unaffected outside of Josh Papali. Uh, we obviously seen the the difference that he made uh, last week for them, um, steamrolling uh, Mitchell Moses on a few occasions there, and, and putting a, a great old shot on Tepai Moreau, I believe it was. Um, but outside of that, you've got you've got your usual combinations. So. The powerhouse is obviously going to come through Lailua and Rapana. Um, and it was good to see um, Blake Austin, you know, pushing up around the footy again as he should and, and getting some rewards last week. Uh, this this forward pack, this forward pack is still formidable without Papali. Um, and if they continue on their way, that's that's where they're going to bully, bully the Roosters a little bit. Um, you know, pretty stock standard um, bench for, for the... Raiders, you've got Adams Clydesdale, uh, Luke Bateman, Clay Priest, and Dynamis Louis. You sort of know what you're going to get out of those guys. It's it's or all about sort of just playing out the averages, making sure that you you don't fuck up, and then let the other boys come back on and, and get the job done. Whereas we look down here, so just some of the outs for the Roosters: Guerra, Ferguson, Cordner, Napa, and Pierce. You know, j- just what Pierce has brought to this Roosters team is going to be a massive loss. Um, Cordner on that edge as well. Napa up front, the finishes of of Ferguson, um, you know that's that's gonna gonna play its part. But again, um, you look at look at the back line for the Roosters here: Michael Gordon, Tupo, Latrell Mitchell, Mister Fixit, Mitchell Orbison, um, and, and Joey Manu gets pushed out to the wing. Um, we see a new halves pairing um, in Connor Watson and Luke Keary for the first time. So that'll be interesting to see how those guys combine. Uh, I you'd probably compare them a little bit more similarly as far as their running game goes. So I expect a, a high tempo uh, style of play for the Roosters. I think that's how they'll try and combat um, the Raiders is just playing that up-tempo footy. Um, Kane Evans gets his opportunity to start for the Roosters. I'm not sure he's a genuine starter, you know. I think he, he's really, over the years, been, you know, just because you start off the bench doesn't mean you're not a good player, you know what I mean? You can definitely find your rhythm and your groove as an NRL player by coming off the bench and bringing impact. And it's, it's all about intensity. Um, Maria Hargraves, we know he'll go out and do a job. Um, Madison gets his chance to start. 
Takeahu and, and Ted Avano, you know, they're, they're blokes that, that get about their work and offloads, running meters are all really good. And off the bench, we've got Isaac Liu, um, Collins and Smith, I believe, are both on debut, and Mitch Cornish finds his way into the team. So it's probably that bench that that could pose the difference if, again, that, that forward battle. If they lose that forward battle, they're not going to be able to play this up-tempo footy through your one to seven. So you, you, your one to seven here for the Roosters can definitely win you the game, Roosters fans. Definitely win you the game. But it's going to be a matter um, of whether or not you can get stuck in or not. So, um, yeah, for, for me, that is the difference. And I think that's where the Raiders um, will, will overplay them. And just because they've got their own strike weapons out there, um, I think they'll get the, the job done. Um, again, it might only be a 1 to 12, but I think it will be enough. Alrighty, well, that wraps up everything in the round 12 preview of Footy Rants. Um, let me know your feedback and any of, any of your guys' thoughts around um, Origin. And uh, I'll look to get a bit of a recap on everything after the aftermath on Wednesday. But as a Queensland supporter, I can out and out say I am not confident. I'm predicting a New South Wales win by eight plus. Alrighty, gang. Have a great weekend and enjoy your footy. I'm out. Peace.